many of the residents that are here now were not the original homeowners when the city took eminent domain. And so we really didn't know them and they didn't know us. And so there was an anger of the Afro-American residents that their family members' homes were taken. And then there was perhaps a, a fearfulness of the whites who moved in here uh, against the blacks. And that's what happened when people don't get together and sit down and talk and share their history and how they happen to be here. I think during today's time, there's been much more communication due to community organizations and finding out our strength is in our numbers. We need not look at these invisible uh, community boundaries and separatism. We need to really work together because we have a lot of the same issues. And collectively, we can work better on those issues. Because of the stadium, parking is a major problem in this corridor. And Audubon was one of the first communities uh, to get uh, pretty close to zero parking. Um, Federal Hill was the next community to get restricted parking again because their community was growing. It's one of the most popular nightlife um, areas. It may have close to 200 bars in that area. So if you come down on a Thursday or Friday night, it's not unusual to see hundreds of people walking the street carrying their favorite drink, perhaps, in their hand. Um, but this is still a residential area, so even Federal Hill had to get uh, restricted parking. The Sharp Hall community did not get it um, right away because uh, you had to pay for it. We didn't know the process for it, and so we didn't have it. But as Federal Hill nightlife grew, and as the stadium started doing, because of necessity of the economy, having more sports or activity events, we were finding ourselves kind of like pushed up against the wall. Every other month sometimes, there's a major activity. And so we went to parking authority, and so with the help of Audubon and some of its historians who was here, when the task force of communities and stadiums met, they remembered and was able to pull up the documentation to show that any community that was greatly impacted by that stadium could get zero parking. It was a covenant that was written. They nearly have zero parking. I think you can park here two hours between 12 a.m. and quarter after 12. Maybe it's 15 minutes. But um, <laughs> with the help of this community um, and our organization really pushing the button, we now have effective, as of August the 1st, zero parking on our residential streets. So those of you who I stopped and said you can't park here because it's zero parking, it literally is. You now have to live in Charlotte Hall in order to get uh, parking you know, near your home. And it's a cost to us. And believe me, we really didn't want to have to do it that way. It's still an inconvenience for our neighbors when they have big parties that they have to negotiate with the church or borrow somebody's pass, you know, in order for their friends to come to visit. But it's because maybe the sports authority didn't think about if you're going to put two huge stadiums near a residential area, the impact that those stadiums will have not only on our homes but on our traffic patterns. So, um, and this is the result of those decisions, you know, that we have to make.